Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to corrupt Half-Life 1 um, in memory. So, first things first, let's launch the game. Alright, now that we have the game launched, uh, I'm going to put it down on the test bar. And the first thing you want to do is open up the RTC launcher. Now, there's a little plugin for it called Process Stub, which basically what it does is it w can attach onto processes and can list you all the DLLs and EXEs it's basically using and allows you to, well, blast them, corrupt them. You can find this Process Stub on the Red Scientist Labs website. It will be linked in the description. It is, well, not very featureful, but it's completely enough for us to do some corruptions. All right, so once you have that downloaded and installed, click on it to launch it. And it will set up the Vanguard and also the process stub window. So the first thing you want to do is you want to browse for the Half-Life process, which is right here. I'm going to hook onto it. There we go. And basically now we hooked onto the Half-Life process. So here we have a bunch of DLLs and EXEs um, selected. Now, a big disclaimer, there's a big text even here, um, and also when you want to hook onto processes in general, do not corrupt anything that's related to Windows or online functionality. So as you can see here, I have some uh, Steam client DLLs and what is a game overlay, whatever. Don't corrupt those if... Um, you know, you don't want any repercussions. So I haven't tried it, obviously. I really would advise you to not do it either. So what I'm going to do is I will select hl.exe, client the DLL. So you would want to select the, the client DLL and also all of these. So you can hold down the left click and just select all the hw.dll files here we go and that's it so once you have these selected um, basically these are the domains we want to corrupt in the memory and we want to select the vector engine now I was watching Mini's little corruption school and they recommend either the vector or the cluster engine I've had the best results with the vector engine. I haven't really played around with the values yet. I advise you to just play around with it as much as you want. Now, one more thing I recommend doing is setting a hotkey for manual blasting. I set it on F1, but you can do whatever. Um, because once you have the game open, it's a bit finicky to all tap back and forth between the game. I have two monitors, but it's still not as good. Okay, so I have it bound, and I will pull up the intensity. Um, I saw around 6,000 was, was somewhat good, so that that's not, you know, big enough to actually crash the game constantly. Um, and the vector engine somewhat pays attention to, like, it tries not to corrupt essential things. All right, now that we have that set up, um, one map I always recommend going on to is I will have to copy the zero because of my weird uh, keyboard layout. So C1A0. Um, that's where anomalous material starts. There we go. So, I'm gonna wait for this to open. Uh, let me adjust the volume a little bit. There we go. And now I'm going to blast it, so... Hey, 
minutes ago, and I'm still trying to find my file. Oh, one of those there we go. They were having some problems down in the coast. All right. We're already getting some results. Ah, and it crashed. Well, as you can see, the game did get corrupted. I had some interesting results earlier. Um, for example, I had this one case where, let me open up the video. It's going to be a bit easier that way. Um, I had this now one. Oh, sorry. So I was watching Minnie's video, so you can kind of hear that. Um, I managed to get this result, which is pretty funny. So, Oops. Yeah, I, I fucked up. Yeah, so it sped up the game, uh, made me tiny, it was kind of interesting. Um, it seems like the results are somewhat samey so, uh, for me so far, so try to play around with unselecting some of the DLLs, like maybe corrupting HLDXE makes it a bit less stable. I will give it one more go, um, and I will also show you um, what to do when the game crashes. So. Um, whenever the game crashes, unfortunately, the process has to be rehooked. So um, let me show you how to do that. Um, one thing I like to actually do, so let me close all this and open it back up. So in the filters, now, as you could see, I only selected so much. And here in the filters, I can just type in whatever I want to see. So uh, client.dll and hw.dll. All right. And I'm going to launch the game again. So sometimes you have to like relaunch stuff just because it doesn't recognize it, whatever. Yep. Yeah, hook onto HL. And now it's only going to show me um, the relevant stuff. <clears throat> Now it does show Steam clients, so make sure to unselect that as usual. Um, okay. And set it back up to 6000. Uh, vector engine. So <clears throat> um, let's see. Yeah, so you have to rehook it every time, uh, which means that let's say the game crashes. Let me actually get to the point of it crashing. Oh, well, I corrupted the sound, and, well, yeah, whatever that is, and now it just doesn't even, yeah, sometimes it just breaks the rendering engine or, you know, crucial stuff, so you can't even launch maps anymore. Um, anyway, so now the game crashed, so what you need to do is you have to relaunch the game, and... Basically here, now there's two ways you can do this. One is there's the um, auto rehook, which basically rehooks it for you automatically. Um, you can enable this, but make sure to unselect Steam Client, the DLL, because whenever it does rehook it, uh, yeah, there we go. So it does it automatically for you. When it does rehook it, it will reselect the Steam Client. So yeah, just don't, corrupt that please <laughs> unfortunately there's no way to not select that because you know you want to corrupt the client the dll and unfortunately steam client has a client the dll part but yeah all right so or you can manually do it so if you don't want to have that enabled you can just click on rehook uh, if you don't do this it won't have any effect so you have to rehook it every time um, but it's pretty easy. You can also do auto corruptions, whatever. It, basically, everything works here the same way as it would for an emulator. So, yeah. Uh, let's do one more. Um, just as an example. Uh, 
All right, I broke the rendering engine and I don't know what's happening now. <laughs> yeah, I... Yeah. Uh, interesting stuff. Let's see what... Yeah, that, that's just... Let's corrupt it a bit further. Let's see what happens, right? Just press it a bunch of times. Okay, now the sound's completely dead. Yeah, and now I can't load into maps. So yeah, um, obviously we'll need to play around with it a lot. And one important thing, is, so so let me have just have some disclaimers as well. Um, one, never do this in online play. So I highly suggest actually going offline on Steam. Um, I also have the insecure uh, launch option. Never go online, as in, you know, don't go into multiplayer and do this, because uh, you will likely get back banned since you're messing around with the DLLs. Um, also, do not um, corrupt anything that's unnecessary. Uh, I really don't recommend going anything outside of these DLLs, but you can play around. If you know what you're doing, go ahead. Um, I'm just personally, I wouldn't advise you to do that. I managed to get like texture corruptions and other stuff as well. Uh, so these DLLs should be enough even for that. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do it. And uh, good luck finding corruptions. Uh, I haven't tested this. I, I did try corrupting Half-Life 2, which wasn't that fruitful. Um, you can also do the server that DLL client the DLL, also offline to the DXE, but otherwise I haven't had much luck with that because it kept crashing. So, but you know, you can basically do this with whatever game. Just do not do it on online games, please. You will get banned for life. That's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, happy corrupting.